going to be a very very hot day here at Disney World. What are we expecting? Yesterday they said it was going to be a high of 34. Yeah, put that bit down to 33 now. Oh, yeah, that I whole know. one degrees will surely save my life today. Um, so we are on our way to Epcot. Well technically speaking we're on our way back to the room to drop off the mugs, pick up the water bottles and the hats and the various sun protection items. And then we're on our way to Epcot today. It is... Is it fair to say it's a very, very loose plan today? Yes, right. We're not even sure how long we are going to pop into Epcot for. Um, we're going to go across, do our lightning lane for Guardians, do a few rides, try and like kind of see some of the shows that we've maybe not seen yet, yeah. or that we want to see one more time, and just really see which way the wind blows, or I should say, see how strong the sun shines today. <laughs> um, we may come back to the resort a bit early today. We may decide to stay all the way through to the end. It's just going to be playing it by ear today. Yeah, who knows? Exactly, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Just while we're walking over to the bus stop this morning, I am still thinking about the food last night in River Roost. It was such an incredible meal the atmosphere, everything, it was just so relaxed and chilled sitting in the river roost and also our server Patrick who was incredible through the whole meal just constantly checking on us, talking, making us laugh and stuff um, he was really good throughout the meal we actually ran into him this morning crossing the bridge towards the riverside mill and straight away he recognised us and was waving saying good morning uh, just one of the nice things one of the nice things about being here, but yeah, definitely one of the best meals yeah, of the trip, I, I think. That. Um, and the best experiences. Yeah, definitely. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind for this trip. We've just been on our final two rides, the first one through Virtual Queue and the second through Lightning Lane. Songs this time? It was I Ran? Yeah, first one was I Ran and the second one was One Way or Another. So I think we have just one song left to collect on that ride, um, which I'm sure is everyone wants to the world. World. That's the only one we haven't had, I'm sure. We've not done a recap on Gardens for you this trip, so we'll do that just now. Right now, as of today's date, which is the 9th of May, it's operating two queuing systems. The first one is the virtual queue, which you can try to join at 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. again if you're not successful at 7 p.m. And the second one is the individual lightning lane, which is the paid fast pass for it. Um, so we did one of each this morning. Paid fast pass is averaging around about $20 per person we found for us over this trip. If you go through the virtual queue, that will take you through the full line, which goes through the Wonders of Xandar exhibit. The Lightning Lane will bypass that. So if you are desperately interested in seeing the Wonders of Xandar exhibit, I would definitely recommend going for the virtual queue. You'll also notice this morning I didn't do anything with my hair. I didn't even do much more than brush my hair. And that's because I knew I would be riding Cosmic Rewind. And I have finally admitted defeat and given it its place because no matter what you do with your hair, it always ends up looking like this on Guardians. Um, yeah, it always ends up looking like that on Guardians, no matter what. So, 
Whereas my hair always looks perfect. Yeah. So I'll see what today's ride pictures look like and I might insert them here. But so far I don't think we've had <laughs> one single ride picture on Gardens where you can actually see my face. The picture that they take is on the first bank upwards and backwards, which is why my hair is always, always in my face. So, but I do love that ride. Is it time now, but for the discussion of which is the better roller coaster, Expedition Everest or Gardens? We'll pause that. Let us know what you think in the comments. We're going to debate it some and come back to this yeah. in a little bit. But right now, I'm going in search of some snacks. Yeah, that's why I'm still standing up. Oh, he's not wrong. This bench is so hot. Okay, so, yeah, we'll, we'll be doing this fast because this is a very, very hot seat in the sun. So I have the grilled street corn in the cob with garlic butter and spicy corn chips. And Ross, what do you have? Blackened fish. Blackened fish. Um, let me just double check which booth this is from for you. Florida yeah, Florida Fresh, I want to say. I'll double check that in a second. Yeah, Florida Fresh booth. So I said to Ross while we were in the queue, I can feel it in my bones already. It's going to be a snack day. <laughs> That's a face of, I'm not sure. I like it. I'll give it a seven and a half to eight out of ten. Okay. Okay, I don't know why I've agreed to do this on camera, because this will be the messiest thing I'll ever eat in the park. Comedy value. Corn? No, instant no. I think it's the spicy corn chips. It's almost like it's almost like it's like corn in the cob covered by Doritos, like cheese Doritos. Intriguing. Uh huh. Like not at all what I expected when I when I bit into it there. Okay, the corn I'm going to give, I think a six and a half out of ten. I actually really like the corn. I did end up scraping most of the corn chips off it because it really did taste to me like a corn in the cob that had been dipped in crushed up Doritos, which actually, when you look at the description, is exactly <laughs> what it is. Um, but it was just a little bit of a weird texture, like when you bite into it and there's a crunch there that you don't expect. So that was a little bit weird. But the, the actual flavour of the corn underneath, because it's been done on the grill and it's, it has a garlic butter on it, that was really nice. I so, settled on seven and a half out of ten for the fish. Okay. Only because you can't really taste the fish. But sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing, but all you can taste is the sauce and the charcoal. Mm. It was nice yeah. though. I enjoyed it. Uh, I can, seven and a half. Yeah, I can't comment on it. I didn't try the I didn't try the, the fish. I'm not a great seafood lover, so I, I had a pass on that one. So I'm gonna go see what we can get next. Is it hot today, Ross? <laughs> what you got? I have a frozen desert violet lemonade from Pineapple Promenade. This so far wins for the prettiest thing that we've had. I'm guessing that's a flower that's supposed to be on top and not a butterfly. It's a flower. This is like instant 10 out of 10. Excellent. Instant. I would ask a duck down here how it is, but it's fast as like... It's good. It's good. I'll, I'll give it a... I'll be generous, I'll give it a 9. Wow. <laughs> that's that's, that's like easy 10. Easy 10. Okay, while Ross is trying this, I will consult the book 
and give you a proper. I think it's a lunch to Well, okay. I'll give you a proper discussion of what that actually is. I actually had it right the first time, so it's officially called Frozen Desert Violet Lemonade, non alcoholic. We'll save the alcoholic ones for later, it's very hot. And the girl just told me that my bucket hat looks nice, which I don't I think is, is not probably accurate, but I appreciated the compliment anyway, it made me feel quite good. But it is keeping me cool today because it is absolutely to use a Scottish word, it is roasting. Absolutely roasting. So Ross is wonderful. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I'd love to be one of those vloggers that can look cool and glamorous in the parks all the time. But since that's beyond my skill set, instead I'm bringing you the real insight into what it looks like in the parks when it is really hot and you don't love the heat because it's cooling towel o'clock, it's bucket hat, it's sunglasses, and my makeup has just melted completely off my face which I'm sure will be in full view when I take my sunglasses off later but I have two nice big panda effect eyes this is just Walt Disney World vacations, 32 degrees nothing but glamour all day long adventure and other than that we have just been wandering around World Showcase getting very 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 hot. So I am up here hiding in the Canada Pavilion where I am about to try the beef tenderloin tips from the Canada book. Thinking about the, the mash first. Good. Good. Mash is good. Oh. 
forward into a mountain. Okay, the big tenderloin tips I am going to give uh, I think I think a seven out of ten. I think a seven out of ten for those. They're from the Northern Bloom booth here in Canada. They are really nice. They're really full of flavour and the mashed potatoes are really creamy and delicious. And the meat is not quite as tender as the dish that they serve here at the Food and Wine Festival. It's a little bit chewier and maybe not just not as flavourful as that dish. So I'm going to get this 7 out of 10. But that, that filled a wee hole for me there. How did we get before I get my next snack? I don't know what my next snack is going to be. So it also occurs to me we haven't really talked too much about the details today, those little imagineering moments that we've been talking about for the last couple of days and the other parts. We've been chatting about this and been walking around. It was a little bit more challenging for us now, I think. And it's because it's in this huge transformation space. But some of the, the details that I loved about this park have unfortunately now gone. Um, like the Fountain of Nations, Electric Umbrella. The stars climbing Yeah, there used to be an effect on the pavement when you left it at night where there were lights in the pavement and they, they sparkled and lit up like fireworks. It was really pretty that was gone too. And I think a lot more things, there are some nods to older attractions, but those attractions are from the four hour time. So we're in this, this weird middle phase with us here at Epcot, but we do have a couple of favourites I think and we'll show you those as we walk around. Here we have probably one of my favourite details in the park. I don't think it really counts as a detail, but a feature of the park is the backwards fountain with the tiny little, and hopefully you can see that. I'll zoom in a little. You can see the top of the fountain matches the shape of the Imagination Pavilion behind it. I just love this little bit. It's it's proper old Epcot and you can just see over the barrier there the dancing fountains behind it. That's my favourite the dancing. They just remind me of the Epcot that we first saw when we first came here. For some reason I'm all about the water features at Epcot. I don't know why that is, but I just like the fountains. And now we're over here in the Land Pavilion and this is another detail that I love which, and you're not allowed to laugh at this, but I only recently actually noticed which is the detail on the balloons. The balloons are above Sunshine Seasons Quick Service Restaurant and if you look closely at the detail on the balloons, each of them represents one of the four seasons with the earth above them. I have taken pictures of those balloons every single time I have come in this pavilion and believe it or not I only just recently noticed that detail but I love it now. some 
popcorn in a butter bath, which I will proceed to eat at the pool later tonight. That'd be the popcorn, not the butter bath. Yeah. And now we're pretty much in a race against time, so it is around about 7.15. We're just waiting to see the final American Adventure show of the evening. We also want to catch the show in China, or the reflections of China. Uh, <coughs> if possible, we would like to catch Canada far and wide again. We also have a lightning lane for Test Track from 7.50 to 8.50. And you'd like to catch a margarita. And I would like to catch a Fiesta margarita. It's not going to be easy. Which is luck. I think we can get it done. That American Adventure show was one of the funnier ones I've ever seen. It's hilarious. Now I know that sounds weird because it is essentially the same show every time, but this time, <laughs> first and foremost, we sat in the third row. You can see so much more detail down the front. So, like, I noticed things that I never okay. noticed before, like the rain effect during like the Depression era segment. Mm. I also noticed during that segment that the World War II battleship comes up at the same time as the cabin which I've never noticed before, yeah. so they both come up at the same time from the floor, but the cabin covers up the ship, and then it's only a bit of the ship that comes back up, so that was quite cool to see, um, and you could just notice a lot more detail in the movements and the animatronics, but poor Mark Twain. He's having a bad week. He's, he's not having a great time at the moment. <laughs> if you watched our previous vlogs from a couple of days ago, you'll know that the American Adventure stopped because Mark Twain's section didn't move during the International Exhibition section. Today, we made it all the way through to the end, so that was good. Yeah. But at the final scene when Benjamin Franklin and Mark Twain come up at the top of the Statue of Liberty, the first thing I noticed was that his arm was at an angle that I hadn't seen before. And for a moment I did think, is this a perspective thing? I just never noticed. And then we started noticing his arm flailing around. And all the animatronics. Uh huh. Um, so his arm was flailing around in a really strange manner. And his sleeve had slipped down, which is a really <laughs> disturbing <laughs> image when you're that close to it. So, so yeah, it was uh, an interesting one. <laughs> there was a lot of hilarity in the audience as well. Yeah. It was very distracting. Last I'm going to say on this particular subject, no, but well, with his own camera at least. <laughs> but I have been absolutely plagued by these orange bird lounge fly backpacks. 
because it seems like everyone at Walt Disney World has one except me. And as you might have already heard me say, there's a very specific face I make when someone's walking in front of me wearing one. I've just made that face, not realising the person in question was taking a selfie at the time. So I'm now immortalised in someone's selfie, making the disapproving face about the orange bird backpack. So, no off chance that that person ever sees this. Big sorry, it wasn't about you, it's about your backpack. Well, we enjoy our beverages. We started a question earlier. I think I think we have to answer it now. I think so. My question is this: Which is the best coaster in Walt Disney World? And the two choices I put on the table were Cosmic Rewind and Expedition Everest. Small asterisks. I've heard lots and lots of people in the lines comparing it, comparing Cosmic Rewind and Tron. No. In my opinion, those two do not belong in the same conversation. Tron is, Tron is good and it's cool and it's fun, but it's it's not in the, the same conversation as Cosmic Rewind. You've got your iconic coasters, like Big Thunder Mountain Railroad and Space Mountain. Space Mountain is automatically beaten out by Cosmic Rewind because it's smoother, it's more intense, it's more fun and you don't generally need like medical attention for your back afterwards and Big Thunder Mountain Railroad well a big favourite of mine it is a family classic coaster so when we're comparing coasters I think my personal opinion the two in contention for best coaster at Walt Disney World when you look at the all round package of intensity and ride experience it's between Everest and Guardians so for you, which is it? For me, it is a case of if I close my eyes and think, right, if both were in the same park, side by side, which one would I close it first? And I think it would be Everest. <clears throat> I'm smiling because I think, for me, it is probably Everest. And the reason I say that, to me, they're equivalent in terms of the ride experience. They both get the backwards element to it. They're both, they're both intense. Obviously, Everest has that big drop. But Everest is a better value coaster, I think, yeah. because you don't have to jump through the same number of hoops to get on it. The whole pre-show experience is much better on Everest because you've got that really enriched experience of going through the Yeti Museum instead of some very dubious acting in the pre-show in Cosmic Rewind. Now, obviously, I'm absolutely splitting hairs here. They are both phenomenal rides, and they both rank as amongst my favourites. But I just thought I'd create a bit of controversy by asking which is, is the best, and then putting Everest above it. But if you have been on them both, if you've been on them both multiple times, let us know in the comments, do you think one is better than the other? Or... Is there another roller coaster that you think outranks both of them as the best roller coaster of Walt Disney World? Is it Tron for you? Let me know. Is it Space Mountain? Is it Pirates? <laughs> Well, that is it for Epcot this trip. Quite sad. It's always a tough park to leave for the last time, Epcot. Aye. I had to take like about 12 long lingering looks at Spaceship Earth. 
as you would have seen in the video we did decide to skip Epcot forever in favour of a final ride on Spaceship Earth. We've seen Epcot forever earlier on the trip. It's, it's no one's mm. favourite. Yeah. It's no one's favourite. Um, but you can't leave without one final ride on Spaceship Earth. So that's what we did. Yep. And we saw a baby bunny outside creation. <laughs> tiny, tiny, tiny. A tiny, tiny baby bunny outside creation shop as we passed as well. So great way to end. I did down that margarita at lightning speed so that I could get on Spaceship Air. <laughs> did have a bit of a brain freeze while I was on Spaceship Air. So I think that's going to be it for today. For anyone who's keeping score, it is now... 9.40 and it's 81 degrees. Yeah. So, so what is that in the, the other scale? Is that 31 or 21 or...? Hot. Hot. Yes, yeah, 81 degrees Fahrenheit it is right now at 9.40 in the evening. So, we're going to drop off our purchases for today. We're going to go fill up our mugs. And I'm going to jump all the way in the pool to try and cool off. Um, because as you can see from this very fetching double cooling towel outfit, it has been a very hot day today. But I don't know about you, I had a great day at Epcot I, today. I did. I, was, I couldn't ask for a better day. Yeah, it was, it was what I refer to as an ideal Epcot day. Just perfect, wandering around, eating snacks, seeing some of the live musicians taking it all in and then we had that perfect sunset view as well so absolutely perfect well, apparently we don't go this way, we'll go this way um, absolutely perfect ends to our Epcot days here so as always, thank you so much for watching hit all those buttons hit all those buttons <laughs> and we will see you on the next one bye